It's a summer's day in the Australian village of Pheasant's Nest and two teenage boys set off on an adventure But by nightfall they haven't returned for weeks the fate of Jamie Egner and Matthew Kelly remain a mystery until a man notices a strong smell coming from under a nearby bridge Back in December 1989 Jamie and Matthew were just two ordinary 14 year olds hanging out and attending classes at high school in Picton a small town located some 50 miles southwest of Sydney in New South Wales Jamie was from the nearby community of Tamor while Matthew lived just down the road in the town of Bargo on December 18 1989 both boys had lunch at a property belonging to Jamie's family in Pheasant's Nest another small community in the area and afterwards they announced that they'd be headed to potholes a local swimming spot according to Jamie's mother Marilyn they'd plan to meet up with a friend en route However, Jamie and Matthew never came home by the next day police had begun looking for the missing boys and when they failed to turn up any leads a Small-scale operation was launched with the help of the state emergency service local firefighters and the New South Wales Police Force Air Wing the authorities began to comb the region looking for clues Sadly though their efforts brought them no closer to finding out what had happened to Jamie and Matthew It was as if the two boys had simply disappeared into thin air and for two weeks both families were left to wonder about what might have become of their beloved sons Each night Jamie's father Anthony Egner went out searching for the missing boy only to return home empty-handed Then on January 3rd 1990 an officer with the Roads and Traffic Authority was visiting Pheasant's Nest Bridge a structure located a little over a mile away from the Egner's property some 250 feet tall the bridge spans the Nepean River allowing the Hume Highway to carry on its 520-mile journey through Southeast Australia. That day, the worker was walking along an area of the bridge beneath the road when he noticed a strange smell. But upon taking a closer look, he made a stomach-churning discovery. Inside one of the four pylons that supports the bridge was a deep, open shaft, and at the bottom, he could see what looked like two bodies. That night rescue workers gathered at the scene and began the long process of hauling the grim discoveries out of the 130 foot shaft Hours later they finally retrieved two bodies from the murky depths Although formal identification took some time due to the advanced stage of decomposition The corpses were eventually confirmed as those of the missing boys For Jamie's father who'd always hoped that the pair had simply run away the development came as a shock We didn't expect to hear this he told the Sydney Morning Herald in 1990 Jamie's brother doesn't understand it yet Jamie's grandfather's in the hospital and he's very upset now as Jamie and Matthew's families grieved investigators tried to piece together a picture of what had happened on that fateful day apparently when the bodies had been discovered the worker had noticed that the hatch that usually covers the shaft was nowhere to be seen so had the boys simply stumbled and fallen to their deaths a case of urban exploration gone wrong? It certainly didn't seem to be unheard of for local youngsters to explore bridges such as pheasants nest Everybody knows about it explained the boys friend Philip Hendricks in an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald Furthermore investigators noted that Jamie and Matthew could have gained access to the bridges interior through an opening nearby once inside they might have set out to explore a walkway that runs for a thousand feet along the entire bridge In fact investigators found evidence that someone had made a makeshift torch in order to illuminate a path to the main electrical switch But how could two teenagers have accidentally slipped down a hole that was little more than three feet wide? especially when the lights were on and That wasn't the only odd thing about Jamie and Matthew's deaths According to some reports Jamie's shirt had been removed and left folded at the entrance to the hatch Even stranger a 10 piece piece of plastic conduit was reportedly discovered nestling on the boys corpses Apparently someone would have needed to fold it in order for the object to pass through the opening Furthermore the Sydney Morning Herald reported that strange marks similar to fingernail scratches had been discovered at the scene Had Jamie and Matthew's deaths really been an accident then? Although homicide detective Jeff Hollis made a statement claiming that the incident was not being treated as suspicious some disagreed In fact the worker who found the bodies spoke to the press about his doubts I believe that a third person may have been with them. He told the Sydney Morning Herald. I just find it all a bit suspicious Moreover he pointed out that nobody had been able to locate the shafts hatch which allegedly required four men to move 
Intriguingly, even other police investigators seem to disagree with the official version of events. I just can't understand how they fell down together," said Picton Sergeant Jim Reynolds. With so many puzzling aspects to the case, some residents began to suspect that something sinister had happened to Jamie and Matthew while they were innocently exploring the bridge. Had they stumbled across a drug deal and been murdered to ensure their silence? Moreover, Jamie and Matthew were not the first teens to lose their lives in peculiar circumstances in the area. In fact, less than two years previously, Aaron Murphy and Glenn Vantaggiato had been run over and killed near Tamor while lying on the Hume Highway, the same road that crosses the Pheasant's Nest Bridge. However, some locals have questioned why the teenagers who were not drunk would have chosen to lie down on the road. So were Jamie and Matthew the victims of an accident, foul play, or something even stranger? The truth may never be known. Check out these other videos from Let Me Know. If you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel, all you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching.